Hey guys, John here. Today we are checking out the React IR version 2 by Saint Rock. So this is an attenuator and reactive load box, or I should say reactive resonance load box. And this thing is very cool. It does a lot of cool things. And we're gonna dive into that today and see how this thing sounds. So let's just jump in right away with the clip using this thing as a simple reactive load and IR loader with my Lichtlärm Audio Prometheus amplifier and a high gain tone, of course. Let's take a listen. Wonderful, that sounded awesome. So that was my ESP LTD Phoenix Black Metal with the Fishman Fluence Modern pickup in it through my Lichtlärm Audio Prometheus amplifier on the lead channel, just an awesome amplifier. Maybe you've seen it on the channel before. The amp was being fed into the React IR2 by Saint Rock. And then in the unit, I had an IR loaded up by ML Sound Lab. And for this entire video, I'm basically using the Reflex IRs and I used one of the MIC 77 IRs, which sounded really good paired with this amplifier. And then as the audio interface, I'm using my Fractal FM9. So this was being fed back into that with no processing there and then into the DAW. It's as simple as that. So this was the reactive load again with uh, the mode two, I guess, and on the reactive load setting. So that's with both switches pressed in, which is supposedly the default setting and it sounded really good. And the IR was loaded into the reactive load as well. So that's great. So Saint Rock is a cool company from Ukraine. I've uh, featured some of their stuff before. The Amperium Live Amp Modeler, which is a very cool tiny little pedal with some great tones in it. And they had a previous version of the React IR, the version one which was, uh, you know, hyped up to me by some other YouTubers. They said it sounded great. So a little while ago, I did contact Saint Rock. I said, hey, I wanna try that thing. And they were like, yeah, we don't have the parts. We can't build them at the moment, maybe because of the war or something. But yeah, uh, eventually they made the version two. So that's cool. And then I said, hey, I want, really wanna try that thing. And they sent it over to me for me to try out on the channel, which is greatly appreciated because Reactive loads are important for people like me. Obviously, I love my tube amplifiers. And even though I love my real cabinet, which I do use from time to time, I'm primarily a reactive load guy, which means that I'm running my amplifiers through the reactive load and into my DAW for processing with impulse responses, okay? Which are, of course, guitar cabinet simulations. And this is just a great way of using tube amplifiers, which are loud in this modern day and age without disturbing the neighbors. And trust me, impulse responses, they sound wonderful and they do a great job at emulating the sound of a real mic'd cabinet. However, there is in the real life, when you hook an amplifier up to a cabinet, an impedance interaction between the amplifier and the speaker and the cab itself. So there's an interaction there that sort of 
goes back and forth between the amplifier and the cabinet. I'm not super technical, but so I can't really explain that perfectly to you, but just know that there's an interaction and that has an effect on the frequency response of your amplifier, okay? And that results primarily in a boost in the top end and a resonance peak in the low end, giving you a slightly more scooped sound. Now, when they started making loads, they started with resistive loads and they don't really give you that impedance interaction at all. So those sound quite flat and boring. On this unit, you can even set it to a passive mode, which I believe is the same thing. Um, and then later they developed reactive loads, which do emulate that interaction between a speaker cabinet and an amplifier, resulting in a nice impedance curve for more realism and a more pleasing tone. And with Saint Rock, they have the reactive resonance emulation, which also apparently emulates the low end response very well. I do think that a bunch of other load boxes that I own also do that and quite well, I might add, but so far I've been very pleased with this thing. I think it sounds great. So recently I did an unboxing video and uh, one thing that I noticed is that the size is nice and compact, but it does weigh a lot, which makes it feel expensive. So that's nice. I think uh, in terms of the looks, it looks very professional and sturdy and it has a bunch of ins and outs and switches going on. So we're going to go over that and then we're going to do some more clips because I want to try this thing with more amplifiers. So on the front here, we have this uh, screen over here. Uh, I, I must admit, I'm being honest here. I haven't tried using this thing with the interface on the front. Just as with the Amperium Live, I'm not a huge fan of how that works on these units, but luckily you can connect it to your computer with the USB over here. And then there's an app that you can download and then you can control the entire thing, which makes it much, much easier. Since that is an easy way to use the unit, that's just what I've opted to use. However, you can also connect it with Bluetooth to your phone and then adjust everything on your phone. So that's great. That's also something that the two notes stuff does. However, I do think that the two notes capture X, uh, doesn't have a good reactive load sound when you compare it to units such as this one. The unit comes with a power adapter uh, that you can plug in on the back here. And then this is the power switch, which you can use to turn it on or off. When I booted up the unit for the first time and started up the app, I did get a notification that the firmware wasn't up to date. So I did an update and there you go. So now it's on the latest firmware. So the switch is over here. You can use that to control the parameters inside the unit. But as I said, I haven't really done that. Uh, there's also this control switch over here that goes along with that. Then the input control, which you can use to basically turn the level up or down of the amplifier. And then a level control for the headphones out, which is great. And then this switch over here lets you set it to either the passive or reactive load setting for me. I'm always going to set it to the reactive load setting because, because that sounds better and more realistic. And then we've got mode one and mode two. I think the default setting is mode two, which has the resonant peak in the low end as well as the top end. And then when you click the button out, the low end is less prominent. Okay. So if you want a bit of a tighter low end response, you can set it to mode one. And then over here, this is the attenuation control, because like I said, you can also use this thing as an attenuator. So that is a great feature for having your real tube amplifiers hooked up to your cabinet, but then on a lower volume. So that's really cool. Now let's take a look at the back because there's a lot to unpack here. This is the fan, which it will need to cool down. Now you can use this thing with 100 watt amplifiers, but as stated on the website, you can also use amplifiers with a higher wattage rating. So like uh, 150 watts triple rectifier, for example, you can use it with this. It would just get a little bit more hot. The website says it can handle up to 200 watts of distorted tones. So that's quite nice. Do mind that this is an eight ohm reactive load. So you're going to have to put your amplifiers to the eight ohm setting. Over here, we have an aux in. You can put anything in there, you know, like an MP3 player or whatever. Then we have the return of the effects loop left and right. So there is a stereo loop. Then we have the main outs XLR. And then we have the throughout. This is where you put your amplifier in. And this is the attenuator out. Then we have a ground lift switch for the main outs. 
MIDI in so you can control this with MIDI for if you're going to use this in your rack for a live show and such. USB, foot switch, so that's cool that you can use it with a foot switch. And then a pad for the send or DI out and a ground lift as well. Now, the cool thing and one of the more unique things about this is one, and this is something that I really like, the IR length is nice and long, 107 milliseconds long. So the IR resolution is great. And I believe you can load up to around 180 impulse responses or something into this thing. Now, in the IR loader, you can use either one impulse response or two or three or four at the same time time in stereo or mono so that's really cool i'm a simple guy so for this demo i'm just going to use one for each tone but you can kind of go crazy there blend mics and stuff like that however it doesn't end there because this thing also has effects it has a compressor a noise gate which is very cool and very handy we've got modulation effects plenty of modulation effects to choose from like chorus flanger we've also got delay and reverb and all those can be set to mono or stereo so that is quite nice so you can use this as your post processing unit and also if you've got an amplifier that does not have an effects loop like some of my oranges for example then you can use this for your post effects so that's really quite nice and all of that combined makes for a very versatile reactive load but the main thing that i'm interested in here aside from the IR quality, which is very important to me, is just how the reactive load sounds as a simple reactive load, because they all sound a little bit different. And I am gonna do a comparison soon after my vacation where I compare the sound of a bunch of reactive loads. So that's gonna be interesting as well. So let's try this thing with another amplifier. This time we're gonna do a clean tone using my Schecter Sunset 7 Triad on the single coil neck pickup for a nice and single coily spanky sound. And the amplifier of choice for that tone will be my Soldano Astro 20 on the clean channel with the middle bright setting. And I'm gonna use some reverb on this unit as well. I'm not a super heavy effects user, but I'm gonna try the reverb just to see how that sounds. I tried it before and they did sound really quite good, quite nice, so that's cool. Okay. And then for the IR, again, I'm going to use the ML Sound Lab Reflex IRs, the MIC 77 uh, speaker choice again, because it sounds great with this guitar and this amplifier. Let's take a listen. <laughs> Wonderful. So again, that sounded quite nice. So the heavy tone at the beginning sounded quite cool and the clean tone as well. Now we're going to do a crunchy tone using my Gibson Les Paul Standard 60s with the Duncan JB through my Victory Kraken Mark II on the Gain 1 channel for a nice mid-gain crunch tone. Again, I'm going to use an IR inside of this unit. 
an ML Sound Lab Reflex IR, this time the green 90 speaker option, which is a green back that should work quite well for this British crunch tone. No effects this time, just gonna keep it simple. Take a listen. Wonderful, that sounded very, very good. I loved the low end thump there, really nice. Now I wanna try one more amplifier uh, with the guitar that's a little bit more extreme. My Ibanez M80M Meshuga eight string, and I'm gonna use my Engel Special Edition Founders Edition, the 6L6 edition on the lead one channel for that. So that's a 100 watt amplifier. It's a chunky guitar. And let's just see how that sounds through the reactive load. This time, again, with an ML Sound Lab Reflex IR, but this time I'm gonna use the Gent 30 speaker, which is basically a V30, okay? Take a listen. Very nice, very nice. So both the Engel and the Lichtlärm Audio Prometheus that I used in the beginning had their own noise gate, so I didn't really need to use the noise gate in here. But I do really appreciate the fact that it has that feature. So I've really enjoyed working with this thing. I think it sounds great. How it compares to my other reactive loads like my Red 7 and my Fractal LB2, that remains to be seen in my comparison in a little while. But so far, I'm really impressed. They aren't super expensive when you buy them from St. Rock. I believe somewhere like 550 euros, give or take. So that's a good price considering what you get for the money. And yeah, overall, it's just very solid. And it just sounds really good. The reverb sounds nice. The modulation has been great. I haven't used it for this video because 
as I said, I'm not really a heavy effects user. I don't use delay very often and stuff, but it's in here in case you need it. And, and the noise gate especially is great for handling high gain amplifiers and stuff. So I'm impressed. I like this thing a lot. I think it's good. Yeah, what else can I say? Thanks to the guys at Saint Rock for sending this over to me and letting me use it. I really appreciate it. Check out their website for more information or to order one for yourself. And also note that I'm now a Tomon and Sweetwater affiliate. Check the affiliate links below. Buy something there and then you can support the channel. I'd really appreciate that. And also check out my Ko-Fi web store where I sell quad cortex captures and all that good stuff. You can also follow Sonic Drive Studio on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Cheers.